Hello, welcome back to Pertainer in Production. Today we're going to take a look at running and using Pertainer on Kubernetes to manage Kubernetes. Before we get into the fun stuff, we have to get Pertainer installed to our Kubernetes cluster. There are two ways to do so. One, with Helm. Two, with Customize. Let's take a look at both approaches now. So the first thing I'll say is the documentation on Pertainer's website is fantastic. So if you ever get stuck or need some help, feel free to drop into the comment section, but also go check the docs. Now, the docs will tell you that you have to ensure you have a default storage class available in your cluster. You have to check there's a default storage class available within your cluster. Why? Well, because Pertainer has state. Both the Helm chart and the customized approach to the installation will provision a persistent volume claim which must be satisfied before Pertainer will ever get healthy. In order to check if you have a default storage class, run kube control get sc or autocomplete it to storage classes. What you're looking for here is, well, anything in this list is a good start. For Docker Desktop, you'll see something like host path. And we need to ensure that we have default and parentheses. This just means that we don't need to provide a storage class name when we provision or request a persistent volume claim with the cluster. Next up, we do a Helm install. You click on deploy with Helm. You'll see that you have to do a Helm repository add pertainer and point it to the Helm chart repository and a Helm repo update. If you're unsure, you can run Helm repo list to see a pertainer is there. Mine already exists. If you're not sure when you last added it, run a Helm repo update to ensure that you have all the latest versions cached locally. Now, the documentation suggests you do a Helm install. I'm going to suggest that you don't do that and instead modify the command to be a Helm upgrade to dash dash install, just like I have here. This just means that this item potent. You can run this command over and over and over again and any changes via your values.yaml will be reflected in the cluster. Helm install can only ever be run once. Next, everything else is the same as the docs. We're passing create namespace and the namespace of pertainer. This just means that this Helm release will live in the pertainer namespace, and if it doesn't exist, hey, it'll create it. Next, we give our Helm release a name. We're calling ours pertainer. I know, surprised, right? Next, we provide the Helm chart repository name and the Helm chart itself name. That is pertainer slash pertainer. Lastly, we're providing one flag, and that is dash dash set, which will set TLS force to true. This just means that we're telling pertainer to only run and expose and listen on the TLS port. Let's quit this and run deploy. As you can see, my Helm upgrade dash dash install detects that the release doesn't exist and deploys it for the first time. We then get some notes that tell us how to get the IP address and port for our Pertainer instance, but we're not going to use that. Instead, let's take a look at what happened in our cluster. We can run kubectl, send the namespace to Pertainer and run get deploy and get pods at the same time. You'll see we have one deployment called Pertainer, which has one of one ready. And of course that has a pod, which is one of one ready. Things look pretty good. Now on the documentation for the Pertainer deploy, you'll see that I'm on the default tab of node port. We also have ingress and load balancer available. These just require extra set parameters that modify the Helm deploy. Now, when should you use node port versus ingress versus load balancer? Well, if you're just kicking the tires on Pertainer with Kubernetes locally using Docker Desktop or Colima or anything else, you're always going to use node port. Well, more than likely. Why? Well, the chances are you won't have an ingress controller set up within your cluster. Ingress controllers are not installed by default unless you're using a managed Kubernetes instance. You have to choose between running Contour, Emissary, Traffic, Nginx, or one of the many other ingress controllers available on the market. So if you're unsure, go with Nodeport. If you're pushing your pertainer into a production environment, then you probably don't want to use Nodeport. Nodeport is just a nice hacky way to get it working quickly. From there, you will want to work with your platform team, your SRE team, your DevOps team, or maybe it's just you. 
that ensure that you have an ingress controller and configure it appropriately. And then the last one is load balancer. This is a quick way if you're running Kubernetes in a managed environment like GKE, AKS, or EKS. However, please note every load balancer you provision or every service of type load balancer typically gets a new load balancer as part of the cloud provider. This usually costs you a minimum of 20 bucks per month per load balancer, so the cost can add up really quickly. It's actually more typical to have a single load balancer service as part of your ingress controller deployment and then handle everything else via ingress objects. So pick wisely. Let's jump back to our command line. Now we can run kube control get service and of course in our pertainer namespace. We'll see here that we have our node port service, it has a cluster IP and we have a few mappings. The one that we are more interested in is this 30779. This maps to the pertainer TLS port of 9443. We can now open up localhost on that port and ensure that you use the right protocol, HTTPS. Now we never told Pertainer to use Cert Manager or Let's Encrypt or anything else for TLS. That means we're getting a self-signed certificate. For that, you'll need to click Advanced and proceed. From here, we can configure our first Pertainer user, the admin user. We've already covered that in a previous video, so I'm not going to go into that again now. So what if you do want to tweak the default Helm installation? Well, you can go to github.com slash pertainer slash kates. That's K-8-S. From here, you'll find there's a charts pertainer directory. As with every Helm chart, there's a values.yaml. You can click the raw button and copy and paste it locally or hit download. I already have the default values file here. This is where you begin to make your modifications for your own Helm installation. You can use the Enterprise Edition or the Business Edition. This is free for up to five nodes. So take advantage of it. Go to the Pertainer website, click Business Edition, and get your free license. Now, all of the image, image pool secrets, node selector, service against and service is pretty standard stuff. And it's unlikely that you'll want to modify that except in extreme and niche circumstances. If you wish to provide your own TLS certificate, you can do so using an existing secret. This is great if you have Cert Manager in your cluster and you've already got that speaking Acme to Let's Encrypt and you have a real production X509 certificate you can use. If you want to enable any of Pertainer's feature flags, you can add them to this string here. And if you want to go the ingress route, you can configure the ingress here. For reference, when we're on the documentation and you say deploy via ingress, these set flags directly correlate to all of the values in the YAML. You don't need both, you only have to do it once. Assuming you're using Contour as your ingress controller, you can set the ingress class name to Contour. And if you're going down the ingress route, remember to set your host here, pertainer.myorg.com. If you want to set resource limits or constraints or minimum allocations, you could do so here in the resources block. And lastly, the persistence. 10 gig is probably enough for most installations, but if you need more, feel free to tweak that here. If you have more than one storage class available, remember to set that here too. And if you have an existing claim uh, because of some backup or restore process, which we'll cover in another video very soon, then you can add your existing claim name here too. So the Helm chart provides all the configuration options that you need to fit most use cases. Enjoy. So while Helm is great, you may prefer to use Cube Control with Customize. It just means there's no state in your cluster and with Customize being embedded in Cube Control, you don't even need an extra command. On the Pertainer documentation, we can see that they provide a Cube Control command that allows us to deploy Pertainer. This is nice because it's versioned and we have good control over upgrades too. So let's take a look how we modify or tweak the versioned Portainer manifest using Customize. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a customization.yaml. This looks and feels like any other Kubernetes resource and that we have to provide an API version and a kind. Next, we can add any resources that we want to deploy as part of this customization. It supports local and remote resources. So here, we're actually able to put in the URL 
for the pertainer managed and versioned release artifact. That's pretty sweet. Now, Customize offers a lot of ways for you to make tweaks, and I would encourage you to go and check out their documentation. The link is in the description. But we're going to take a look at two relatively simple augmentations that we can make to the YAML. One, it's quite common to add extra labels to third-party resources so that people know who is responsible for them. What are the SLAs? Who to call when something goes wrong? So here, we're going to add a new set of key value pairs. One, app my org. Two, env rocks. Does it make any sense? No. <laughs> Will it work for this example? Definitely. Lastly, we want to add or use a set of patches to modify resources. So let's take a look at that patch file. Customization patches have to match a resource and then changes will be diffed. Here we're matching apps of v1 deployment and the pertainer namespace where the deployment is called pertainer. On this resource, we're going to find a container called pertainer, and we're going to add or edit the memory resource limit and set it to 512 meg. So now we can kube control apply using dash K to tell it to use the embedded customize in the kube control command. Again, you don't need an extra tool to start using customize today and we pass in the directory to any Kubernetes resources and customization object that we wish to apply. Here, we can see all of the resources that we expect were created. So let's see and confirm that the changes we requested have been made. We can describe our namespace pertainer, and you'll actually see our labels app, my org, and rocks exist. Not only that, we can describe the deployment. And on this deployment, we will see labels, app my org, and rocks. Not just on the labels, also on the selector and the pod template. Perfect. Lastly, our pod called pertainer with a container called pertainer now has a memory limit of 500 and 12 meg. Sweet. So now that we are in our pertainer instance, we can click home and we can see all of our environments here. Now, because our Kubernetes and pertainer server are all the same place, they're all the same thing. We've got our local environment, which is the Kubernetes cluster that pertainer is running on. When you click on that, you know, we have all the basic things you would expect from a UI on top of Kubernetes. That would be the ability to check out our namespaces, the ability to see all of the applications running in our cluster, and we can drill down to inspect individual applications. Like so. We have the ability to view and edit our config maps and secrets, and any volumes available within the cluster. We also have the ability to add Helm repositories and deploy Helm charts with a very nice user interface. Assuming we want to deploy Cert Manager, we can select the namespace that we want to run it, give it a name, and if you want to pass any custom values, they're all presented like so. If you're happy with that, you hit install. Helm has never been this easy. But I don't just want to show you the UI on top of Kubernetes. Instead, I want to show you how Pertainer brings the same ideology of simplifying complex things to the cluster itself. So let's pop open the cluster settings and go to setup. From here, we can allow people to provision cloud load balancers if we want. We can turn on change windows. We can configure the time or time frame that we allow rollouts to happen. We can restrict access to the default namespace and ensure that only administrators deploy ingresses, you know, resources that allow external access to workloads within the cluster. But that's still not what I want to focus on. Instead, I want to take a look at security constraints. Here, we can enable pod security constraints. And before I turn any of these policies on, let's just hit save. So what is this doing in the background? Well, let's jump over to our CLI and take a look. You'll see the last command I ran 
was to list our name spaces. So let's run that again. And what you'll see is that 17 seconds ago, we have a gatekeeper system namespace added. We can use this namespace and see what's running on our cluster. And you'll see we, we have the gatekeeper controller manager and the audit pods working. Now it doesn't matter if you're not familiar with what gatekeeper is, but it is in our cluster and managed for us by Pertainer. So let's go back up and take a look at some of these constraints. We can restrict privileged containers from our cluster. We can restrict sharing the process ID namespace and the host IPC namespace. We can make sure that no workloads mount host file system paths, the host path directive. But if you want to allow access to some, you can read only or writable. You can require that all workloads have a read only root file system. You can restrict escalation to root privileges, restrict Linux capabilities, allowing capsis admin, an absolutely terrible idea. But if you're familiar with capabilities, you can have allow lists and drop. You can have allowed capabilities and require drop capabilities. Lastly, we have the ability to enable SE Linux, AppArmor, SecComp, and SysControl profiles. But for now, let's just turn on the few that we've selected. And it's done. If we come back to our gatekeeper, we'll see that not much has changed. But if we run Cube control get validating webhook configurations, we can see Gatekeeper is here. And what's actually happening is that Gatekeeper is listening for every resource that is applied to the cluster. And if it violates any of the policies, it'll be denied. You can run Cube control API resources and grep for Gatekeeper. And from this list, we can see that we have access to all of the Gatekeeper custom resources whether that be configs, allowed users, capabilities, file system groups, host file systems, and so forth and so forth. We also have access, because we enabled these in the Pertainer UI, the ability to describe constraint templates for the Kate's PSP host file system, which if you scroll up, will actually reveal all the rego that was used as an omission policy to deny host path volumes on any of your workloads. And I don't think there's ever been an easier way to secure a Kubernetes cluster than this one page on the Pertainer UI. So that's it for today's video. We take a look at the two ways to install Pertainer to a Kubernetes cluster, allowing modifications and tweaks based on your own requirements. From there, we dove in to the Pertainer UI. Of course, it offers all the same features that you'd expect from a Kubernetes UI. The ability to browse and navigate the resources within a cluster. But Pertainer brings an air of simplicity with a UI that just wants to help you get things done. Securing a Kubernetes cluster through installing Gatekeeper, writing Rego, importing policies is quite a challenge, but not with Pertainer. So go check it out and make your lives a little bit easier. We'll be back soon for the rest of Pertainer in production. Have a great day.